Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we've got the desk shelves and they are finally done. I am incredibly happy for that. Uh, it has been a longer slog than it should have been. Three videos for something that's not that difficult. So let's finish this thing. And let's pick up where we left off. Last time we got this fully assembled and now we need to do all of the little detail things to make it happen. I wanna make these arches a little bit shorter. So I eyeballed about how long I wanted them to be and mark them out with them on the frame. And then we can take this whole thing apart and that's a lot of pounding and everything on this is designed to be tight because we're going to be trimming it all up and, and uh, bringing it ever so slightly down with a card scraper. Um, the loose shelf in there, I just decided to leave that loose um, and it will float and sit on top of these arches and actually worked pretty well with that. So, oh well, I, uh, I should have fixed that. Uh, I should have done that differently, uh, but I didn't, so we have to live with the mistakes we have. Um, but I'm going to be changing that in the plans and it's one of those lessons you just learn. So everything comes out and these may look like they're wiggling a lot, but they actually have that wedge slot. So there is actually space from the wedge for them to wiggle around in and they slide out. The other thing I want to do is I want to put final marks on this. So we're going to take all the tape off and right after we take the tape off, we're going to mark inside. And so you can see inside all the joints uh, where nothing is ever going to be seen. I'm going to be putting permanent marks. So if this ever comes apart, uh, then you know how it all goes back together because, you know, tab A goes into slot A and so on and so forth. So we're going to be then doing all of the trimming on this. So the marks that we made earlier, we're going to cut these down and clean them up. And then we can go through and start chamfering everything. Um, I'm doing that to match the desk and drawers. And you know how I like a chamfer, especially on the white oak. It really comes out nicely. So once we get all of these cutted, cutted, cut, then we can start work on the, uh, the little detail things. Uh, the other thing that is a nice little detail is I want all the wedges to be sticking up the same height. And there's ever so slight differences in them and variations. And so they were all slightly different heights. So it was all together. I marked all of them so that they would be the same height above the top of the, uh, the, the top shelf. And then I can cut them all down to length. For these small pieces, it's actually easier to just uh, chamfer them in your hand, or you could clamp the block plane in the vise, but you have to be careful with that not to grab the wings, otherwise you might break them, and uh, go to town on that. For all the other pieces, it's much easier to clamp them in the work and then run the plane over it. Uh, with a, a small block plane, it actually works really well to go down it. You just have to make sure you are going with the grain um, so that you're not getting all the, the jumping and, and, and chipping out on it. You want to get a nice clean pass. I was doing about 15 or so passes, so it's a pretty heavy chamfer on all of the edges. And uh, there's a good bit of work to do on this. It is one of those things where it seems like a simple process, but it takes a while. For all of the end grain items, you want to skew the plane so that you're going across at about a 45 degree angle. And that will allow it to cut much, much easier through that end grain. And we're going to be putting a chamfer on all of the showing corners. Then we move on to the shelves and it's going to be the exact same thing. Lock it up in the vise and go to town on it. Um, this one is, is long enough and large enough. I might grab my number four for this, uh, but because I had the block plane set up, I just decided to keep going with the block plane. That isn't set until I got to the end grain. Um, on that case, I found it a little bit easier actually to go with the number four, which we'll see that in a moment. So with all of these, we run along the grain and then we can do the end grain um, pieces. And I'm going to start with just a little piece on the end and taper that down to the same matching chamfer. And then I needed a larger plane so I could skip across these open spaces. And the number four fit perfectly for that. And so I can chamfer this all down with that. And get a nice clean edge on there. The next step is we need to actually scrape everything down and get a smooth surface. There's lots of little stains on this from dirty hands and other marks. Um, some glue squeeze out here and there. And it is much easier to scrape it all now than when it's together. So I have a set up a card scraper and uh, we can take it down to fluffy shavings. And this is where I'm going to actually finish this all. I'm not going to do any sanding on this because I'm going to be using Robium Monocoat. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But it's amazing the surface you can get with a card scraper. Uh, it's one of those skills that is very hard to learn to set up the first time. But once you get it, these amazing curls come off and it's, it's a delightful, delightful tool. It is um, a lot of fun, too. You can push it, you can pull it, and it works in any direction. And if you want to see them, I do actually provide them for sale on my website. So you can buy the exact same card scraper and burnisher that I use. But I have quite a few videos on sharpening them if you want to see that. 
For the arches, it's easier to use a spoke shave. Just make sure you clamp them in very nicely. It would be very nice to have a shave horse here, but I don't. So we're going to use the vise. And sometimes you pull, sometimes you push. You just always have to be watching the grain direction because these like to dig in and, and go wildly. But I love the curls that come off of a spoke shave. And this is just a really, really fun step to, to clean this up and get that nice matching chamfer to, to go all the way around it. Yes, it is a flat bottom spoke shave and a rounded surface. For the finish, we are going to be using Rubio Monocoat. This is pretty much my all-time favorite finish. It is a bit expensive, um, but it is incredibly easy to put on. It is the easiest finish I've ever put on. It's easier than, than boiled linseed oil. It has a very, very similar color to boiled linseed oil and brings out the white oak like very little else. And it is just incredibly easy. It smells like oranges. It's safe to work with. It's just a really, really good finish. And it's so easy that you just wipe it on and let the wood soak up as much as you want. Sometimes you can actually leave puddles on there and let the wood soak it in. Um, rub it into the, the, the grain and make sure that it gets all the way in all the surfaces. Um, and you can see how it really comes out in this white oak. It is just beautiful. The ingrain especially needs a lot of soaking in for it to go in. And then we're going to set it aside for about 15 minutes and just let the wood soak up as much as it wants. We're just going to let it sit. Then after about 15 minutes, you come back with a new rag and you wipe it off. And it's kind of like a polishing move here where you're just wiping off the excess that's on there and polishing down the surface. And that's it. The finish is done. Um, you let it sit for 24 hours and it's cured and you're good to go. It is an incredibly protective finish and durable finish. And if you ever get problems with it, you can just um, scrape down a spot and spot clean that thing. It blends into itself perfectly. It is an incredibly fun finish, and I use it for all of my, my major furniture now because it's very protective as well. So now time to reassemble all of this. Yay, we get to put it all together, making sure all the numbers match from one to the other. Need to be very careful when putting it together not to ding up the work. We've put a lot of work into it, so using pads whenever possible to put them down in. The last thing we have to do is pin the arch in place so it doesn't slide down on it. And so I'm going to cut off some quarter inch brass rod uh, and this is just uh, a little bit longer uh, than the arch is wide. So I think they're like three and three eighths long. And so we are going to file them down, round down the edges, and these pins can then go in through the arches and through the leg and hold the bottom shelf in place. And so once we have the four brass rods cleaned up, we can drill a quarter inch hole through the arch, through the leg, and out the other side. And I want to drill through until I just feel the tip coming out the other side. I don't want it to blow out the other side because I want to keep the uh, I want to keep the wood grain nicely. And once I feel the tip on the other side, then we back it up and come at it from the other side. Now I can't go straight in on this because the other leg is in place. Um, that's really not a problem because I'm just going to be cleaning up the other side. I want to get a nice clean entry um, hole for it to come out. Then we can drive in the brass peg, and this will hold the arch in place. So the shelf on top is floating and will actually just sit on top of these arches. I know some people worried about tipping one way or the other. It's actually not a problem at all because it's a nice and tight fit. It's kind of clamped in there end to end. And just like that, the, they're done. I learned a lot of great lessons on this one. Um, on this one, I probably wish I scraped the sides down a little bit more because you can see some of the, the lines marking. This hole wasn't perfectly straight. Um, so there were just a few little bits here. This is the one I really wish I would have fixed having that half lap on the bottom one. Um, it should have looked a lot like this one on the top, but oh well. Um, I, I was planning on doing it the right way, but then messed up. So you can see it on the desk, and it, it holds all of my printer and other things like that, getting me a little bit more of a free space. I really like how this all came out. It is very, very pleasing to me. And now I have a whole desk that I made, and it fits me very, very well. I am very happy, if you can't tell. So... There you have it. I, they're all done. I'm very, very happy. Um, now, you got to see what they look like on the desk, and I'm really looking forward to putting it over there and seeing how it goes. I do have plans available for these now. There are links to that down below, um, as well as it's bundled with the whole desk and drawers and other things like that. So the whole system um, is all one thing if you want to get that, or if you just want to get them individually. I have those all available on my uh, website down below. There were a few mistakes and things that I would have learned from, uh, but those are encapsulated in the plans. So now when you want to make it, you can learn 
learn from my mistakes rather than having to make your own. And I think that's the whole idea of plans. I really kind of like this aesthetic. It's something that I'm playing with a little bit differently. Um, I'm trying not to go Japanese, though anytime you do a, a reverse bend on something like this, it looks Japanese. It just more or less matches the, the desk and the, the shelves. It just more or less matches the desk and the drawers that I made earlier. Uh, it's kind of a, a fun thing to think through, and I'll probably be doing some more of it in the future. I really like that design and the, the simple aesthetics of it. Um, the pins through here, this is actually something I wasn't originally thinking I would do. Originally, my thought was to hold the arches up with a screw into the shelf, but then I messed up on the shelf so the shelf doesn't hold itself into the legs. Uh, so now the shelf needs something to sit on. I know there's going to be quite a few people saying you didn't actually attach the shelf, so theoretically it could tip. Yes, it could tip a little bit, but it is in there really, really securely. It's going to take a lot to get this to tip one way or the other. Other. So I don't really worry about that at all. But this has been a lot of fun. I really like it and I hope you do well. If you have any thoughts or ideas, things that I should have done better, let me know those down in the comments. I do read through all of them and I learn quite a bit from that. So thank you. If you'd like to uh, add some other comments or snide remarks or just say thank you, uh, just click the like, comment, share, and subscribe. All those things help out the channel. They help with the algorithm and they keep Wood by Right in front of other people. So thank you. On top of that, everyone who's scrolling over there, they are patrons on Patreon and are financially helping this channel go. So thank you. Also, you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. And all of that goes to keeping us going. Honestly, without members and patrons, this channel wouldn't exist. So thank you to everyone for that. I think that'll about do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. As this is the final video, I think we can finally shelve this topic.